so I don't know why we decided to get this dramatic, but basically my friend Jake and I are testing out the Vaporfly 4% to see if they are really worth the $250 price tag, and so this is what really happened on that day. What's up everybody, this is my friend Jake and he has the Vaporfly 4% in this box. Yes. And so we're gonna be doing an unscientific, scientific test on whether or not they're faster than our normal trainers. And he also has the Zoom Turbos, so we're gonna be testing those as well. And we're gonna be using heart rate and I'll kind of break that down in a second. So let's head to the track. Okay, so we are finally at the track, and now, now we're gonna get into an unboxing of the 4%. Let's do it. For anybody that doesn't know, these are the Flyknit Vaporfly 4%, which are basically a shoe designed by Nike to break two hours in a marathon. They were designed for the break into event where they got Luisa de Sisa, Zizane Tedese, and Eliud Kipchoge, some of the fastest marathoners in the entire world, to try and break two hours in the marathon. Eliud Kipchoge ended up running two hours and 25 seconds, which is incredibly fast, but he didn't break the barrier. And that's why we're testing these shoes, to see if they are fast, and if they are really that 4% efficiency boost that they claim them to be. So this is how the experiment's gonna work. Basically, we're gonna be running 520 miles for four miles two miles in the Vaporfly 4% and then two miles in our regular trainers. We're going to be measuring heart rate and pace throughout the entire run with on wrist heart rate through a Garmin 4Runner 235. We're going to be waiting till our heart rate drops below 100 beats per minute to start the next rep in order to make sure that we have a standard baseline and something to get back to. After all that, we're going to review the data and then we'll see what happens. Now it's time to get warming up. Are you ready? Right. Okay, Jake. Three, two, one, go. One, go. Yes, Jake. Whoa. Nice. Yes. How did it feel, Zach? Felt oh, pretty good. It was good, it felt like a normal tempo. It's honestly kind of hard to run slow in these shoes. <laughs> I went out way too slow the first lap, and then I compensated too much, so I felt like my heart rate spiked. What was it? 520. And then I finished at 522. Jake just got down to 99 beats per minute, so now he's gonna start second rep in the Zoom Turbos. Let's get it. And three, two, one, go. As you can see, we have a wild Zach Levitt stalking his prey. Will he catch him? How was that? Oh my god. How was that one? I initially went into the rep thinking it would probably be the same, and I was expecting the bounce, and I was just like, oh, oh my gosh. I just like hit the bottom of my shoe, and I was like, huh. Okay, 4%s maybe have something. What was it? 5.15. But uh, I'm interested to see the heart rate. I was only two seconds fast. Three, two, one, go. I was just about to start my second Zoom fly rep when this happened. Can you go pee? <laughs> <laughs> so these are Jake's Zoom turbos. He's doing his rep right now. And those are basically the shoes he's running in that are not the 4% and they're actually a really nice shoe by Nike but they're not supposed to be super efficient like the 4% but they do have the Zoom X foam which makes the 4% special as well as the carbon fiber plate in them. And then I'm wearing the Hoka Nepali which are basically very standard Hoka running shoe just good for long runs, easy stuff, kind of do it all but not the best for fast running. Yes, 
Good stuff. How was that one? 519. Good stuff. 515 again. I felt like a lot more controlled than the last one. And I really just felt like I was very smooth. Like I felt a lot smoother in these for sure. Jake! I'm gonna make it through this. <laughs> okay, final rep for Jake. Yes, Jake. How's that one? 518. Felt a little bit harder than the four percent for sure. <laughs> Another 515. Another 515. So Jake was running 515s. I was going 520s. <laughs> so Jake and I are done with our reps, and we have all the data on his watch. So we're gonna go do a two-lap cool down, just kind of do some drills to chill down, and then we're gonna go analyze the data. Hopefully the heart rate reflects something. I mean, we can do some math and calculate the exact percentage, um, but this should be cool. Yeah, so far it honestly doesn't look like it had that much of an impact on heart rate at least. But yeah. It really felt a lot better on my legs, so we'll see if there's something that it shows. And we'll do as scientific of a approach as we can with our unscientific data. I mean, heart rate is pretty good. Like, we did this in a somewhat scientific way, so it should have some evidence as to if they're more efficient or not. But by feel so far, pretty good. Yeah. So let's head out. Okay everybody, so we are back in the studio. Well, it's actually just my room, but we'll call it the studio for now. And basically we were just going over the data and we have some information to share with you guys. So as you can see, we opened up all the runs on Strava and basically we have Jake's on the first four tabs. This is first, second, third, and fourth. And, um, and then we have my first, second, third, and fourth. And so I'm gonna call out the stats and then we'll kind of go over what we think happened because it's pretty interesting what the data shows. It didn't quite match up with how we felt while running. Yeah, that is that is a big note. Okay, so on Jake's first rep, he ran a 522 and he had an average of 143 heart rate. And then the next rep was in his peg turbos, 516 and then 142. So his heart rate actually went down and then the next rep in the 4% he ran 515 and he ended up having a 153 heart rate so his heart rate went up from the first set and then a 515 and this was with a 157 heart rate so a little bit higher than the 153 which was in the 4% so they kind of contradict and 157 versus 153 is not 4% faster but it is around like 2 or 3%. Before we go into my data I just want to kind of give you Jake's approach to it like how are you feeling? Like, what were the differences by feel? Because obviously the heart rate is saying something other than what we were feeling. Yeah. Because during the reps, it was a little different. Uh, it really, every single rep in the 4% felt a whole lot easier than in my peg turbos. It's just, everything felt a lot more squishy and efficient and my form just felt better while I was running in these. Like, we're not sponsored to say this. Like, Nike is not sponsored to say this. <laughs> like, they really do feel different. And then now into my data, um, so my first rep was a 523 and I did 156 heart rate and then my next one which was in my Hoka's was a 519 and 152. So again just like Jake's um, the heart rate went down a little bit and that could be possibly attributed to the fact that we were warming it up into it but then the second set is more of like an indicator I guess you'd say and so I ran 520 and 519 so very very similar very similar and I had a 161 heart rate in the four percent and then I had a 164 heart rate in the Clifton's or the Nivalis just kidding and so basically the heart rate in between the two shoes was like negligible but they are great shoes and they're definitely something you should try out if you're doing a marathon it can help you become a better runner and they're just really a tool yeah. they're just a tool to maybe improve your performance in races but they're not anything that's going to make you an incredible runner you're not going to put these on and have a 10 minute 5k pr um yeah. but they are great shoes they're awesome but that is all for our conclusion it was somewhat scientific but not super scientific so you know have some leniency there um that's all for today. So, Jake, 
Thank you so much for letting me borrow the shoes. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for letting me do the reps with you. And it was great. <laughs> but that's all. So see you next Tuesday. Live happy, be healthy. See you soon.